last time on Master Chef Canada. Come on! A head-to-toe challenge set up a sweet pressure test. Eclairs. But sour results. Oh, they're small. Brought an end to Jennifer's Master Chef journey. Tonight. Oh, large box. The home cooks are inspired by a Canadian hero. What? Switch! Tag, tag, tag. And a classic tag team challenge turns up the temperature in the kitchen. Terry is angry, and you don't want to make Terry angry. Honestly, you have to hurry. Oh, my God. Being part of the top seven, the dynamics are a little more tense. You can see the other six home cooks are in competition mode. It feels great to be among the top seven best home cooks in Canada. I'm this much closer into opening my baking studio. Oh, big box. Oh, geez. That's a big box. I see that giant mystery box behind the judges. <laughs> oh, boy. It's a chef. Inside must be a chef. <laughs> there are now only seven of you left in this competition. Now, more than ever, it's important to stay grounded because what's inside of this next mystery box is absolutely out of this world. Are you ready to find out what is gonna launch you forward in this competition? Yes, yes chef. chef! Please welcome a true Canadian hero, Colonel Chris Hadfield. Wow. What? Oh my God! the first Canadian astronaut to walk in space. Space! <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you. So I'm a pretty big Colonel Hadfield fan. Oh, my god. This man is the Canadian icon of space and science. He's like a spokesperson for everything I love. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> During his illustrious career, Colonel Hatfield orbited the planet thousands of times, spending a total of 166 days in space. Wow. That's a lot of time without a home-cooked meal. <laughs> Colonel, could you tell us some of your favorite foods whilst you were in space? <laughs> <laughs> no, no nobody, nobody goes to space for the food, I'm afraid. <laughs> but what did Colonel Hatfield eat? <laughs> to find out, you have to lift the mystery <laughs> box in front of you. Home cooks, on T minus three seconds, lift your boxes. Three, two, one, lift off. Oh, wow. <laughs> Freeze tried everything. <laughs> in front of you are a selection of foods that were available to Colonel Hadfield during his missions in space. Dried fruit and nuts, freeze dried vegetables, candied salmon, and freeze dried beef. I've never cooked with space food, but I'm pretty sure that most of the other home cooks haven't either. This is gonna be a little more difficult to elevate. I'm looking forward to seeing what we're all uh, gonna pull off. Tonight, you will have just 45 minutes to prepare a gourmet meal using the ingredients in front of you and the staple pantry at your stations. These ingredients are probably not going to taste very good, so it's up to me to make sure that I impart flavor in everything. At the end of the cook, Colonel Hatfield and the three of us will taste the top three dishes. The home cook that produces the winning dish will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. Are you ready to reach for the stars. Yes, yes, Chef! Your time starts now. Ah, little Space Odyssey ground control. <laughs> I am so excited today. I want to win because I want Colonel Hadfield to think I'm good enough to win, and I'm so excited, and I need to win. <laughs> These strawberries are just like little dust powders. So the first thing you have to do to reactivate some of these ingredients is to add some moisture to it. OK, chicken. Work your magic. Whether that is water, whether that is a little chicken stock, whether that's some white wine. On board the spaceship, there's this needle that sticks out of the wall. And you take your package, and you slide it over the needle, and then you turn for the amount of water you want to put into it. Then you push either a lukewarm button or a hot button. That's about the best you can do as a space chef. Oh my goodness, this is a bit nerve-wracking. I've never cooked with many of these ingredients before. I actually really enjoy this challenge. It's weird, but it's interesting. To me, it's got to be the real measure of both the skill as well as the imagination of the chef. The strawberries rehydrating? They're starting to actually look like strawberries. This is a real honor. Colonel Hadfield is a real hero. 
I'm gonna make Colonel Hatfield some breakfast. I'm gonna make him some really flavorful pancakes with uh, strawberries, cranberries, walnuts, and a raspberry coulis. I'm very good at mystery boxes. I've won before. The secret is cook what you love. I'm making what I would want to eat if I came back from space. I'm making congee, both with the dehydrated corn and the potato. Kanji is a porridge that is savory that you normally put meats or vegetables into. This is what my mom always makes for me. I'm making a fresh pasta, a fresh linguine, and then I am gonna use the chicken and broccoli. Cooking for Colonel Hatfield today, the pressure is on. I'm doing a fruit kaflutie with toasted nuts on it today. Some dried apricot, check out these dried cranberries. A kaflutie is like a French custard pie. I wanted to be out of this world, intergalactic. 25 minutes. You have 25 minutes left. Today I'm making kind of like a, a salmon pie with a smoked salmon mousse. It's going to have layers of freeze-dried green beans and smoked salmon. Oh, it smells so good. I'm the only one left in this competition who hasn't been called up for a mystery box, so it's time to get called up for a mystery box today. Terry, hello. Hi, Chef. Hi, Connell. <laughs> wow, look what you're making. Yes, I'm trying to make some sweet ravioli with a minced meat filling, and that'll be breaded and deep fried. The one thing I didn't know as a baker is dried fruits. So this is a dessert, right? It is a dessert. I've never done it before. <laughs> so this is where no man has traveled this before. Is exactly. <laughs> a one for me, Terry. Thank Thanks. you, Chef. <laughs> Hi there, Mary. Hello, Hi. Mary. How are Hi. you? Hi, how are you, Colonel? Very nice to meet you. So nice to meet you as well. I'm making a little tart. I'm going to make it kind of like a creme brulee for you. Was there much dessert up in the space station? You know, actually, when we're up there, we run through a lot of calories. So we had a lot of chocolate, which is a real treat to look forward at the end of the day. How do you tell it's the end of the day? So we chose London, England. Perfect. When the queen gets up, we get up. I love it. Sounds great. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. This is probably the most intimidated and scared I've been in this kitchen so far. Veronica. Hello, Chef. How are Veronica, you? Veronica, it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Colonel. So what are you making? I'm making a corn and potato congee. And I'm going to do a Japanese omelet with the carrots and the broccoli and a fish floss crumble. What's the biggest challenge right now that you're facing? Uh, the biggest challenge is time. The clock's not in my favor right now. On board the spaceship, we have a schedule that tells us what we're doing every five minutes for the entire six months we're up there. That's amazing because I don't know what I'm doing in the next five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you better figure it out because time is ticking time away. Is I'm ticking. working on it, Chef. Five minutes. T minus five minutes, home cooks. Ah. Veronica looks like she's going to pull off that congee in 45 minutes. That's astonishing. Uh. Dr. Sean, he's got his pancake stack there. He's doing a little piping of whipped cream. Pretty, pretty happy. It's out of this world today. I'm amazed. The boring, repetitive way we just reheated those foodstuffs on orbit compared to what they have done. Full up tote, deep fried ravioli. It's really impressive. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands, Hands up. up. Woo. Or as we say, lift up! Mission accomplished. <laughs> Feeling really good. The eating experience is definitely out of this world, I promise. I want to come out taste my dish so bad. It's going to be such an honor. The first dish that we're going to call up was made by a home cook who doesn't shy away from taking risks. I think I had an amazing dish. I really need to get to the top six. Please bring your dish up. Matthew. Oh my, god. oh my god. I have never been in the top three of a mystery box yet. I'm so excited. So I did a smoked salmon parfait with a walnut crumb with a smoked salmon mousse and candied salmon. Matthew, I'm really looking forward to tasting something that came from such simple ingredients that I live with for half a year. To me, this is just delicious. It's a surprise, both from taste and texture. Excellent, thank you so much. I've eaten a lot of different food. I can tell you right now, I've never eaten anything that looks quite like this. Mm. You know what? This doesn't work. If you're narrow-minded. It's creamy, it's delicate. 
I love the crunch. <laughs> this is so innovative and so creative on so many different levels. Great job. Thank you. Good job, Good job Matthew. Thank you. The next home cook, we like to call up, made an impressive, savory dish. Bring up your dish. Veronica. Sorry, guys. <laughs> This is a corn and potato-based chicken congee. I also made a Japanese omelet with the dehydrated broccoli and carrots, as well as a fish floss crumble. I really want to be sure and get everything on the spoon here. I don't want to miss one thing. That's a wonderful mixture of everything. It immediately gives you a sense of being back on Earth, a sense of home. Thank you, Colonel. It was an honor cooking for you today. Thank you. Kanji is the ultimate Chinese comfort food. This dish does it for me. The meat is perfectly cooked, very moist. I love the corn. After 166 days in space, I would love to come home to one of these. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> the last dish we'd like to taste is sweet and whimsical. I think I've executed a perfect dish. It's quite innovative and it tastes really great. Congratulations go to... I have heard Colonel Hadfield's lectures. I've read his book. I've seen him in concert. I want to hear my name so badly. Mary. Yeah, God. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> Careful on the stairs. OK. <laughs> This is a strawberry raspberry creme brulee, but in a pie shell. So you can eat the whole thing. Even with dehydrated ingredients, you've been able to make the dish look spectacular. Thank you. Absolutely wonderful. Creme brulee portion is very, very light and creamy, but you're able to get the beautiful flavor of those strawberries in there. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> mm, that is unbelievably delicious. <laughs> no one would be able to connect that box of what looked like throwaway food <laughs> into this very rich and delicious dessert you just made. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a super pleasure. Thank you. Now we need to take a few moments to discuss. These are three top-notch dishes that could belong in any of our restaurants. Today is the day that I finally get my first mystery box win. Way beyond anything I could have imagined for creativity and quality. I have so much technique there, and the judges recognize that. I know what my vote is. Let's go tell them. All right. The competition is getting super tough. I would love an advantage right about now. Choosing a winner was extremely difficult, but we all gravitated towards somebody who blew us away with their creativity and innovation. Colonel Hatfield, would you please do the honors? The home cook who made the best dish tonight was... Choosing a winner was extremely difficult. Colonel Hatfield, would you please do the honors? The home cook who made the best dish tonight was... Matthew. Oh! I want people to start taking me more seriously in this competition. Matthew, you've done MasterChef Canada proud. Amazing job. These home cooks should watch out for me. Please give a big round of applause to our very special guest, <laughs> Colonel Hatfield. Thank you very much. It's an honor to have met so many talented home cooks. I wish all of you great success, and I look forward to having your food again on Earth or anywhere else. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Matthew, please follow us into the MasterChef Canada Pantry. Excellent. Thank you so much. Having won the mystery box, Matthew is now in control of the elimination challenge. Matthew, your First big advantage is you don't have to cook in this elimination challenge. 
Congratulations, Matthew. You now advance straight to the top six in MasterChef Canada. Top six MasterChef Canada? Wow. What a huge achievement so far. Tonight, we have decided your fellow home cook will replicate this. A complex and exquisite hors d'oeuvre platter. This gorgeous platter is comprised of a halibut ceviche in a tuile cornet. Beautiful spoonfuls of pan-seared Asian beef. Spanish tortas with chorizo and balsamic-infused beet skewers. Wow, wow. And finally, pork wellington with mustard-infused Hellman's real mayonnaise. I'm so relieved that I'm not cooking right now. Each one of these hors d'oeuvres requires different cooking techniques and precision. To replicate all five, your fellow home cooks will need a little something else. Impeccable teamwork. Tonight, they'll be cooking in teams of two. It's a classic MasterChef tag team challenge. Your second big advantage is that you get to choose the teams. I get to be the puppeteer, and they can't say anything about it. So Matthew, is there one particular home cook that you feel is standing between you and that trophy? Definitely, Mary. From the very beginning, Mary has been strong. But if something goes wrong, I think Mary gets flustered more easily. That's interesting. All the other home cooks think I'm just a nice guy, but I'm gonna show them that I have more of a strategic side. We're gonna see a lot of sweaty home cooks today. It looks like we have a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yes, chef. As you can see, Matthew won't be cooking tonight. He's saved from elimination and he automatically advances straight to the top six. In the pantry, we gave Matthew a second advantage. But that advantage was not choosing the type of food that you'll be cooking tonight. That decision was ours. And we decided you will all be making a gorgeous platter of delicate and delicious hors d'oeuvres. Tonight, you must replicate the taste and look of these hors d'oeuvres exactly. I want to have a catering company, and hors d'oeuvres are a huge part of that business. But hors d'oeuvres are so intricate, a lot to get done. These hors d'oeuvres look absolutely complicated. They're stunning. They're beautiful, they're tiny, and they look difficult to make. They're quite delicate. We have five varieties of hors d'oeuvres, three pieces each, which means 15 hors d'oeuvres. This is probably the hardest challenge ever. Oh, boy. Tonight, you will have just 90 minutes to perfectly reproduce this gorgeous platter. But you don't have to do it alone because this is a classic MasterChef tag team challenge. <laughs> I prefer not working with other people. The worst thing about a tag team challenge is that someone else's mess up can reflect poorly on you. Which brings us to Matthew's second advantage. He got to choose who you'll be cooking with. <laughs> Look at those eyes. <laughs> so sneaky. <laughs> Matthew, who are you going to pair Mary with? I'm going to pair Mary with someone who has a completely different food style from hers. So I'm going to pair up with Jeremy today. Jeremy's plates are not often as elevated as an hors d'oeuvre needs to be. I'm doing the plating. <laughs> I don't really make any hors d'oeuvres, but it's going to have to work because this is a team. So, Matthew. Who are you going to pair up with Veronica? I know that Veronica uses her mind very well. Knowing that Veronica thinks about all of her dishes, I'm gonna put her with someone who cooks more from the heart. Veronica's gonna be with April Lee today. I think there's gonna be some clashing going on. There will be some yelling, <laughs> but I, I believe that she will listen. If there was ever time to be bossy, it'd be now. April Lee, are you ready to be yelled at? I can handle Veronica shouting. If she can handle me shouting at her, well, that leaves Terry and Dr. Sean. You'll be working together. It's no secret that Terry and Sean are close. They haven't been in the pressure cooker together. Let's throw them both in the pressure cooker and see what happens. Ooh. That's gonna change the dynamics of their relationship. Hoping's gonna just all come tumbling down. I definitely do think he's wrong. I just think that we'll gel as a two-man team. As in every tag team challenge, only one of you 
can be cooking at any one time. Whilst your partner watches from the sidelines, at regular intervals, we'll yell switch, and you and your partner will have to change places. It's now time to head to your stations. At your station, you will find everything you need to replicate this stunning hors d'oeuvre platter. Your 90 minutes starts now! Mix the mayo, mix the mayo with the, with the mustard. Get the pork tenderloin, cut it, slice it down lengthwise. Yep, that's good enough. That's good enough, Jerry. Don't forget to season it. Looks like everybody's starting with the Wellington. Sean and I work really well together. We are similar minded. Alone, Terry and I are very strong home cooks, but bring us together on a tag team and we will form Super Chef. All right, man. Well, for me, it has to start off with the pork tenderloin Wellington because I want to slather it with the Hellman's mayonnaise and get it in the oven. So instead of searing, you can actually use the mayonnaise to lock in the moisture. Exactly. Get the mayo on it, put a little more flour on it. Not a ton, just a smidge. Um, I guess you could say that I'm a bit of a control freak sometimes. Matthew put Jeremy with Mary because he thought Jeremy would drag Mary down. Just flour your hands up nice because you got hot hands, man. I'm sorry if I'm being a stinker. It's okay. I don't care if she tells me what to do. I'm gonna work hard, just like I always do. Look at you go, like a wizard. Cut it a little bit more. Cut like... the ends off? No, 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 like cut it more even this way. Veronica is already bossing April Lee around. Just put it in the pot pastry, go, go, go. April Lee, she cooks with a little bit more of her sort of heart and instinct. I don't think she's got the same kind of attention to detail that Veronica has. Oh, this puff pastry is soft. Turn it upside down onto cling wrap. <sighs> I'm not gonna let Veronica push me around. I can do this, Veronica. Okay. It's nice, good temperature, Terry? It's quite soft, man. The puff pastry is beginning to melt. It's really quite sticky. Ours looks better than Terry's. Yeah, it does. Is that fixable, Terry? Yeah. Okay, do it, man. Not a great start. 375 at that 375. size. Okay, we have to cut up our root vegetables now. Where's our ring molds at? Get the little, like, one that's like about this big, like a loony. It looks like all the pork wellington is in the oven, so now everyone is starting to beat. Oh, I love it. So good. Switch! Tag, tag, tag. Go, go. Go. Tag, tag, tag. Oh, good tag. Okay, uh, what next? Okay, what do we need to do? The switching is the worst thing ever. Potatoes and beets? Yeah, okay, dude. Just let me think for a sec, okay? okay. You don't really know, like, what's on the stove, what's in the oven. This is insane. Do you know how many rounds that you're gonna need? Yeah, I need nine. This okay. is nine. Clean off that cutting board. Put that all in the bowl. That's why I put it there for us. April Lee likes to be clean and neat. Clear off a spot. Onto what? I cook in complete chaos. April Lee seems to be telling Veronica what to do now. Veronica, just keep focused. Focus and organize. What ring are we using? Uh, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. Something weird is happening in Terry and Sean's station. They're eerily calm, and they're working much slower than everybody else. Sorry. <laughs> Messy Terry. I don't feel I need to coach Sean, because I know Sean is going to do his best. What do they say about working with your friends? Never mix business and friendship? I'm working on the beats. Good job. And you have one hour left. I'm working on the beats. I'm getting the beats out. Yep. Ooh, they're babies. Ooh, they're little. It's okay, it's bite size, remember? Bite size. We're good, we're good. Jeremy and I are not going home today. I think Terry's going home today. Sorry, Terry. Oh, he's actually pissed. You hear what Mary said? You know what? I'm going home tonight. Let's go. Please. Terry is angry, and you don't want to make Terry angry. Oh, shit, I don't like that I said that. Now I'm all nervous. I'll tell you, I think she's awakened the sleeping giant. Just focus, just focus on what we're doing. Switch! Go. You just need, okay, the, the, uh, check the onions, Terry. So what should I do next? The, 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 uh, the halibut? Next, uh, next uh, yeah, prep the halibut. What Mary said is motivating me to do better. Top six is a steak. My dreams is a steak. There's no option but to win this. And let's get that twill going, okay? So twill butter? Let's rock and roll with that twill. The hardest thing in this order of platter to make is definitely the twill for the halibut ceviche. You have to make the batter, use the stencil, use the proper offset spatula so you get that right thickness to it. You need three, so do one okay. more on the last empty spot. Look, April Leaf, she's making the trails right now. You can see holes, they're way too thin. Go, go, okay. go, get into this oven. Six minutes. She's not going to be able to fold that into combs. What do you think? Not a chance. OK. Something's beeping, and it's either this one or Shit. that one. It is that one. I would check on the wheels. 
The Tweedo can be temperamental. Your hands are gonna hurt, and I'm sorry. It's okay. You have to form them while they're still hot. Are your hands okay? It burns, but I don't care. Yeah. You know, I think Jeremy's actually had a bit of a calming influence on Mary. Beautiful. That looks so good. Hack the fish. Hack the fish. Veronica. Hi, chef. Let's look at what you got done here. We have the cones in the oven. You're gonna be folding those cones. Uh, we will be folding those cones. There may be a bit problem there. Yeah, we might have to redo them. What happened? You Did spread it too thin. thin. Yeah, we need to redo this. This is the worst possible thing that can happen. Switch! And switch. I need to remake the twill dough. I don't want oh. to make my partner panic, but we are in the weeds and we might not get out of it. And you have 30 minutes left. Oh my god. Should we start on the beef or no? Yeah. Nice. The next uh, edamame? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Terry and Sean seem to be preparing the edamame puree yeah. for the Asian seared beef. Sean, we can yeah, do this, yeah. let's go. I'm worried about time. And I know that Sean's edamame puree is taking a long time. Wanna use the use spatula first around and see if that goes. Yeah. Use the spatula around. I think Terry's sweating more standing on the sidelines than he is when he's on the stove. You think this might be the end of this little bromance he's having with uh, Sean? Sean, come on. Switch! Okay. Okay, go. I keep touching those arms. I think April Lee's just about to take out wow. the second batch of tweets. This is the moment of truth for Veronica and April Lee. If you look at the edges, they've just crisp, which means that uh, it's perfectly cooked, actually. Good work. We finished the twill dough. I just want to clear this off, Veronica, and make sure that these cornets are safe. If you're going to do that, you have to hurry. The cleaning is really annoying. The intensity is definitely heating up. Oh, shoot. What do we need to do? Terry, get to pickling, man. Get to pickling. This is not a priority, Terry. Let's go, baby. Let's go, let's go, let's go. OK. I'll be right back. Huh? Where are you going? I'm from Alberta. I'm the meat girl. She's getting a cast iron pan. That's a brilliant idea. I know how to cook beef. You're killing it. Looks like April and Veronica are getting along very well right now. You're my new best friend. You have 15 minutes left. Get the mayo. Mayo's over here. I mean, there's a lot of multitasking going on right now. They have unfinished hors d'oeuvres, dressings to finish off, sauces to taste. Don't spill it. Don't spill it. You're going to touch it. Switch. Go, 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 go. You should be starting to plate. Let's go, let's start on the beef. I'm strong with plating. Making a zillion appetizers in 90 minutes is kind of terrifying, so that's super fun. Killing it, Mary. Let's go, let's go to sauce. <sighs> There's a lot to do and not that much time to do it. Switch! Shit. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You need to stop those, you need to stop those beats. The clock is ticking down. This is complete chaos. Oh my gosh, my hands are shaking. Just one leaf each. Beautiful. Smooth like a surgeon, buddy. I am overwhelmed by all the little bitty adults here. Adults require attention to detail. Switch! Here, take this. Switch! Go, go, go. Shit. Take that, take that. <sighs> okay. This last home cook needs to finish all of the plating. One minute! Yeah, next. Beats? Beats? Come on, Veronica. Steaks couldn't get much higher because this is ending and one of them going home. After looking good, Sean. Just cleaning up. Ten! Nine, Let's go, Mary. eight, And check those seven, dots at the very end, six, too. Think about if you even five, have 10 seconds. Four, Keep going, three, Sean. Two, on, guys. one, hands up! Woo! <laughs> wow. Come on, look. <laughs> Terry, yeah, yeah. What? I noticed that the cornets look a little bit off. You fill the cornets with the garnish. Terry put the sweet potato and apple garnish for our pork wellington inside our cornet. Our cornets are filled with sweet potato and apple, not pavlet ceviche. I know we've made a great mistake here. Why, 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 why? It's now time to taste your tag team dishes. Mary and Jeremy, please bring up your platter. I want to show the judges that two really, really different home cooks can put together a beautiful plate of hors d'oeuvres. Are you pleased with the way uh, your platter turned out? We both touched every single hors d'oeuvre on that plate, so I think we're both happy with it. Mm -hmm. Taking a look at the beets, they look much smaller. 
than the one that we showed you. I think you may have used the wrong cutter. Lovely flavor, but half the size, which is a little disappointing. Mm -hmm. The spoon. The beef, absolutely delicious. The dressing on it, the hoisin, the soy, a little bit of acidity there, has a nice sticky glaze to it. Lovely contrast. Pork Wellington. Pork Wellington. The meat is perfectly cooked. It's very moist. Yeah. The topping, cut perfectly. Provides crunch, some freshness into the Wellington. Thank you. Thank you. Out of all of these hors d'oeuvres, the most difficult is the cornets. Ceviche has to be cured properly, and the cornet has to be crispy enough. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. I just love the flavors of the juice coming from the citrus and the crunchy twill. This proves to me why you both deserve to be where you are right now. Thank you, Chef. This is a really fantastic dish. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I feel great. I feel like both of us did a great job. April Lee and Veronica, please bring up your platter. How's the tag team feeling about it? I did way better with April Lee on my team than had I tried to approach this alone. That sounds like a great compliment. <laughs> That's an amazing compliment. I couldn't have done it without my partner, Veronica, tonight. I think you've got everything on here, but the beat. We had the red beet on the top and the golden beet on the bottom. Oh. That won't affect the flavor. It's just the presentation. Exact replication. Understood, Chef. Beautiful combination of flavors. Upside down, though. And the cornets here. The ceviche ice actually tastes very good, but the twill is a little on the thick side because it's rolled over too many times. If you'd open that up a little bit more, you could have filled that just with a touch more of the ceviche. Because now I've taken one bite, I have nothing in the bottom here. Understood. So this is a tricky one. The pork has to be succulent in the middle. Nervous? I'm nervous every time you taste my food. Please be soft. Hmm. Pretty awesome. Yes. Good. Okay. That is incredibly moist, and it's tricky to do. I covered the pork in Hellman's Real Mayo. Using mayonnaise is a nice little trick to seal in that moisture. <laughs> Great teamwork. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that leaves only one hors d'oeuvres for me. The size of the beef is a wee bit too small. Okay. But the puree. That was very, very nice. The pickle, nice touch, good details. Overall, you gals did a great <laughs> job. Thank you, Chef. Good job. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm really proud that we did this together. It's a tough challenge. It was. Sean and Terry, please bring up your hors d'oeuvre platter. I'd love to know how you both feel, but I can kind of tell by the looks on your face. The coronets were not filled with the uh, halibut ceviche. What are they filled with? Uh, the okay. sweet potato and apple topping for the pork. Where is the ceviche? It's on my station. Terry, what happened? I just feel the wrong feeling. Did you notice that, Sean? Unfortunately, I only noticed at the end of the cook. Wasn't it your job to pick up on those little details? I blame myself a lot. It was a replication challenge. I'm not even going to try this. Where is the ceviche? It didn't make it to the plate. It was a replication challenge. I'm not even going to try this. Completely understand. So how do you feel about the other hors d'oeuvres on this platter? I'm happy with all the other hors d'oeuvres. Did you taste the beets? I honestly didn't even have a chance. No one tasted the beets? No. Mm -hmm. 
I wish you would have tasted the beets. Because they're delicious. The cheese just is creamy, it's delicate, and the beets are perfectly braised in that balsamic vinegar. It's a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Let me try the pork. This is cooked really very, very nicely. It is moist, seasoned well, it's perfection. Beautiful beef tenderloin. You knocked it out of the park. It is that beautiful, rich beef with a little acidity, a little bit of heat. It's a beautiful, beautiful hors d'oeuvre. Thanks, Chef. Thank you very much, Chef. But is this enough to keep you here? Good job, man. We did well on everything else. Yeah. We tasted your hors d'oeuvre platters, and now we need a few moments to discuss. One of the toughest challenge. 90 minutes, five hors d'oeuvres. I'm surprised they got it done, actually. The competition is getting harder. Smallest error, and it's goodbye. There were some parts that were not exactly replicated. Some were missed completely. I can't go home today. Right now, I'm worried. In the end, it all comes down to tiny details. Hopefully this platter is enough to keep Jeremy and I here for top six. So let's go tell them. Tonight, we asked you to do the near impossible. Replicate a gorgeous platter of hors d'oeuvres in just 90 minutes. There was one tag team whose hors d'oeuvres displayed a higher level of finesse and attention to detail. And that team was... Mary and Jeremy. What? Congratulations. <laughs> This is my first win. And so being the top today makes me motivated to just keep going. Your ceviche cornets were almost flawless and gave you a clear edge. The two of you will be team captain for the next team challenge. Thank Good you. Luck, guys. Yeah, I am so, so pumped. The second best platter was made by Veronica and April Lee. Well done. Please go up to the gallery. Good job. Thank you. Good luck, guys. I'm not ready to go home. I don't think Terry is either. It's a tough pill to swallow. Terry and Sean, somewhere tonight, your communication broke down. I didn't come here to live at top seven. I came here to win this competition, and I haven't won it yet. Terry, you put the wrong filling into your cornets. But Sean, you failed to notice the mistake and try and fix it. You're both strong cooks but you both made serious errors. And for that reason, we have no choice but to send home. Terry. Love you. Love you. This for me. Terry. We felt that you were more at fault for the ceviche era, and I think you do too. I lost uh, an amazing friend in the kitchen. He is someone who could have gone all the way. Terry, you came to Canada to pursue a PhD in law and ended up discovering a whole new dream. You are an extraordinary cook. Thank you very much. It's been an amazing journey. I've done things I thought I would never be able to do. The best dish we've tasted so far in this competition. <laughs> I live here with so much pride and dignity in myself. That is delicious. You're a very clever man. Thank you, Chef. From my humble start in Northern Nigeria to finally be here in MasterChef Canada, it's amazing. Terry, look on up at all those home cooks and tell me which one you think is going to be Canada's next master chef. I think Sean could win this. Just needs to believe in himself. Thank you. I feel happy to be one of the very few who have been given the chance to show Canada what I can do in the kitchen. It is amazing. Time. It's a classic restaurant takeover. Welcome to Chinatown. But when the top six find out who they're cooking for, 
Ooh, I'm starstruck. Hi. <laughs> Things heat up. Hey, hey, be careful, be careful. And both teams spin out of control. This is absolutely unacceptable. It's madness, it's chaos. We're in a lot of trouble.